Hello everyone, this is the first in a few videos where we're going to examine how variables are used by your program. So this is going to involve when you create them, when you change them, and when you pass them into methods. These are going to be a few details that you haven't seen yet that were happening behind the scenes, but now that your program is getting uh, bigger and better, you should know exactly what's going on. So for the first example here, we're just going to review what happens when you create a primitive type. So primitive types are things like little integers, little doubles, little boolean. So you'll see here I've made a variable x and y, 5 and 6. Now in the memory of the computer, when you do those two lines, something like this is going on. It's made this variable called x, a nice convenient name for you, but what x does is x actually stores a memory address. Now what's this memory address x point to? It points to the number 5. And y stores a memory address that points to the number 6. Okay, so basically it directly points to a value, right, that they're storing. So when I go back to my program and I do something like y equals x, basically the way this reads for a primitive type is the memory address at y set it equal to the value of x. And so if we go over here, we know the value of x is 5. So what this does is it takes the y6, takes it away, rewrites it, and it puts a 5 there. And so that's what's sort of going on behind the scenes. Now you'll see here in the next line, I say x++. Well, it says the memory address that x is pointing to, make it go up by 1. So when we go back to see what this is going to do, we know it's already 5, so it should up at the 6. So when we come here, it takes that 5 away, replace it with 6, and then if you do your printouts as expected, x is 6 and y is 5. So primitive types are pretty easy, right? The memory address that x is representing points directly to a value. Now this is going to be a lot different than what's going to happen next. And what happens next is when a variable is a, a reference type variable. And a reference type variable is one that refers to a spot in memory that stores an object. So you can see here what the setup is going to be. I have two objects in this class called kid. Kid is a very simple class. Every kid just has a name and an age. And what's going to happen when I use this is I'm going to make two kids, K1 and K2. Now what this does in memory is it makes a new object of type kid with the new keyword and then it makes it again for Bob and what this ends up popping up is it ends up popping up K1 and K2, two variables, but this time there's a little bit of a difference. K1 and K2 don't directly point to two kids that have been made in memory. There's a little intermediate step here. That's why these are called reference variables. K1 actually stores the memory address, and that memory address tells you where to find Adam. So for existence, for example, for existence here, for example, let's say that's a memory address, 1, 2, 3, 4, just to make it up. What K1 actually represents is K1 actually sends you to somewhere in memory that is storing a memory address. And that memory address represents the location of that student. So whenever you really use the variable K1, you're actually using this memory address reference. And that's why they call these reference type variables, because it's referring to a spot in memory, not an actual value of the object itself. Same thing with K2. When you take a look at K2, Let's say Bob is made at memory address 6789, then K2 is actually storing the value at 6789, and that refers to that spot in memory where Bob is, and Bob's 8 years old. Now, just to see that this is actually taking place, I'm just going to run my runner program, and if I print out K1, You've seen before that K1 should print out the memory address of the kid, Adam, and K2 should print out the memory address of the kid, Bob. So when I give this one a quick run here, 
you're going to see my lines there where I print out K1 and K2. Should give me memory addresses. And there they are right there. Okay, so those were these two system outs that were right there. Now, if we follow along the next lines, it sort of gives you an idea what happens when you use reference variables. When I say, hey, K1, make your age go up by one. What happens is, is you basically say, hey, K1. But when you say, hey, K1, you're sort of saying, hey, memory address one, two, three, four. So it goes there and it says, please switch your age and make it go up by one. So it takes the age and switches it to eight. When we say, hey, K2, whoops, we're not quite there yet. And so that's basically what that line does. Now, here's a neat line, which shows you the difference between the primitive types doing this, y equals x, and what happens when you do it with a reference type and you say k2 equals k1. Now, a lot of beginners will think this means, hey, kid2, set yourself equal to kid1. And so visually, they think kid2 should become Adam with an age of 8. But this isn't what it means. When you're talking about reference variables and you say something like k2 equals k1, what you're actually saying is, hey, k2, set yourself equal to the same memory address as k1. Remember what these reference variables are remembering. They're actually storing this and this. And so when you say, hey, k2, equal the same memory address as k1, what you end up getting is you end up getting this memory address equaling 1, 2, 3, 4. And so they both now point to the same memory address. As a result, that arrow that I drew before has to disappear. And this now also points to the same spot. Now at first you're probably saying to yourself, well they both point to Adam. Can you actually have these two reference variables both pointing to the same spot in memory? And the answer is yes, that's exactly what happens when you deal with reference variables. And now they both point to Adam, who is currently 8. Now a neat line to watch, what happens here, is if we go back to our program, and we say, hey K2, make your age go up by 1. Well, let's go do that. We go back here. We say, hey, K2, which is really this memory address. And this memory address points up here. And we say, make your age go up by 1. And so what happens is, is the age goes up by 1 to 9. And Adam becomes 9. Now, the neat thing is, if I say, print out K1.age, it's 9. If I print out K2.age, same spot memory, 9. Okay? They both represent the same object. In the old days, computer science part B used to explore this idea a lot, and there's a lot of tricks you can do by fiddling with memory addresses this way. In this course, not so many, but it's something you still have to know about for behind the scenes. Now, a lot of students ask, what happens to Bob? Nobody's pointing to Bob, and you're right. Bob is basically lost in uh, the memory of the Java virtual machine at this point, and you're never getting Bob back. Uh, what happens to it eventually when your program shuts or if the program starts to run out of memory, the Java virtual machine will have something called a trash collection and it'll analyze and it'll remove that stuff from memory. But you're right, for now, Bob 8 is pretty well gone, right? There's no more reference to this kid object. So that's the basics of this one. Just to prove that it's working here, check out the output from what we had here. I printed out both the kids age after doing this and I also printed out their memory addresses afterwards and look at what it ended up printing out. Kid is 9, kid is 9 just like our picture suggests because they're both pointing to the kid called Adam that's 9 and you'll see that both of them are referencing the same spot memory 4CC68351 and that's really it. So that's your little primer. Now it's worth noting here, arrays 
are considered objects, and so arrays work like this, not like this. Okay, arrays are objects. Uh, you may be wondering about strings. Strings are a little unique. There's going to be a separate video on strings coming up later. Anyways, that's your little primer to start you off.